What an amazing day for Richmond and what a really wonderful, wonderful city this is. Don't you? Amen. Amen. Don't you just wish that Andy would learn to express some enthusiasm? <laughs> He's so understated. Uh, oh, good, my slide's up. Um, my humble beginnings as a creative person began uh, probably in the second grade when I realized that I was too nearsighted to catch a baseball. So I stayed inside coloring. Since then, I've been a painter and a designer and an art director and a writer and a creative director. And happily, um, the things I'm working on have scaled since then. When Andy asked me to come and talk, um, what occurred to me is that I wanted to try to start something that would last longer than 18 minutes here and to do something with some people in Richmond. And so what I'm going to talk about for the next 15 minutes is a project that we started in earnest last weekend. And oddly enough, as I was um, getting ready for this, uh, the word plot, uh, it occurred to me that the word plot had a framework in its different meanings that was really appropriate. Plot is not a word that I have spent a lot of time thinking about. It's not a particularly elegant word, but there it was. So plot means a plan, right? When you plot something, you scheme. And specifically, a plot is a plan to change something, which is what we're trying to do in modeling this project and hopefully inspiring things beyond this project. One of the things um, about the world we live in is that we honor experts and we celebrate winners. When we need to recognize and celebrate generalists and the collective. And um, we like to add up the things about ourselves that are different and that make us special and unique when we have an opportunity to count the things that we have in common and work together to grow those. We live in our heads, we live in our computer screens. We've heard a lot of talks about this. There's an opportunity to use our hearts and our instincts and all of our se senses and to be fully human. And I know I use the word, we all use the word, we have an addiction to innovation, but creation is so much bigger. Not everything has to be new and shiny to work. It's okay if everybody does the same thing as long as that thing works. And it's okay to bring things from our past um, if they're relevant to what we're trying to do now. Another meaning of plot is a narrative, a storyline. So in order to create something, you need people, and those people have to be in the right relationships to each other. This story starts, uh, Andy mentioned, with a really extraordinarily creative school in New York called the School of Visual Arts, and some people who inspire us there. And a particular undergraduate class that students sign up for to learn how to use their creative talent on real projects, to go out in communities, get out of the classrooms, and really work on things. And also this brand new master's program called Design for Social Innovation. It's the first MFA of its kind. Um, and so Sarah Cornish worked with me on this project. She's in the graduate program. So it was a mix of undergrad and graduate students. And then I met Andy at Ivy's wedding. Andy introduced me to Leah. Leah introduced me to Jeff Weathersby and some other wonderful folks in town. And they introduced me to a woman named Megan Rollins, who is the director of Boaz and Ruth, which, yes, yes, okay, great. So you know, and I have to say that I'm still nearsighted, so I may need someone to read for me. So Boaz and Ruth rebuilds the lives of men and women who need a second chance, promoting skills development and a transformational job. And they empower the community they're in. And I was also really impressed to read that Boaz and Ruth was the winner of the HuffPost job raising challenge. They finished fourth out of 74 companies. So amazing. And Megan Rollins put together a really amazing group of people who worked with us on this project. And we said every day, I'm sure they were saying this, who are these people coming down from New York? What the hell are we doing here? And we said, what are we doing? We don't know these people. Nobody has time. We had, don't have a lot in common. Um, and we were nuts, and we are nuts, and we'd like to inspire more of you to be nuts and join us. And another meaning of plot is a place, a specific 
plot of land because creating is always place-based. It doesn't matter if the place is in your imagination. It's always specific, just like nature is always local. So the specific place we're talking about, if you know Bo Boaz and Ruth, is Highland Park, which is 3.9 miles away from where we're sitting today, 11 minutes according to Google Map. And if you don't know, it's over 95% African American. The median household income is 25 grand. There are people sitting among you, just to put that in context, who spend more than that on their car in a year. Um, it's mostly low income singles, seniors, and single parents. It is in the center of six of the seven central blocks with the most number of people returning from prison. And what the people in Highland Park said to us is, there's no place for fresh vegetables. The only stores are corner stores that charge an arm and a leg. So imagine no food in your neighborhood and no way to get to places that have it that you can afford. Uh, Boaz and Ruth is in Highland Park and the particular plot of land that we're talking about is that red square there which when you get down on the ground is a really charming, charming piece of land in a lovely neighborhood with a white picket fence. And what started this whole project was that the folks in Highland Park said to us that their dream was to have a community garden. So we set out to try to get them started doing that. So the creative process is really, really simple. You have to figure out where you are, what is current reality. You have to figure out where you want to go, what's the desired end state. You have to develop a plan for getting there, and then you have to do it. And when you co-create, you just need to do all of that in alignment with all of the people who need to make it real, so that everyone sees the same reality, so that everyone shares the same vision and acts on it in alignment. So our class started in New York. It is fair to say that among the students, we did not have any gardeners, so they had to start from scratch, <laughs> figuring out how that worked, thinking through where peas come from. And they also started mapping Highland Park. They just started l learning what they could about the current reality, where services were, what the history was, where toxic chemical plants were that might have affected the soil. And then four of us showed up in Highland Park last weekend and we've, talked to, we've heard people talk about this early in the day. Um, we wanted to get people out of their comfort zones. We wanted to get people to know each other, so we literally tied them together. And uh, it's a game trying to figure out how they get apart. That in the middle there is Peanut, who was watching uh, everything happening last weekend. And we were laughing that when he grows up, he's going to know the secret to getting this uh, rope trick. It was really, and they have no way to know this, um, it was really one of the most creative and loving and giving groups of people that I've ever worked with. And they filled the walls with visions. Look, don't me make me cry like Andy, okay? No, it's okay. And so what I loved is that, you know, it just built. They started out with that one plot, right? Let's start a garden and they wanted to uh, grow enough vegetables to, su to supply the firehouse, which is a restaurant that serves uh, meals to the neighborhood. And then they started saying, well, but that'll inspire other people because they'll walk by and they'll see what we'll do we're doing and they'll get all excited and they'll all start their own garden and then we'll have enough vegetables to have a green market and that can become a business on its own. But that wasn't enough. And they said, well, you know what? We really want to have the best tomatoes anywhere. It's gonna, we're going to be competitive about this. And people are going to come from everywhere to have our vegetables because they'll be so good. And then somebody said, you know, what about the elderly? They're stuck in their homes. They don't get out. This could be a place for them to participate and really feel like they're part of the community. And the same with the kids. They can engage in this. And then somebody said, what about the people who are doing community service? They could also work in the garden and feel a part of this. And it really could change the whole neighborhood. But only if it's beautiful. And people will notice and they'll say, wow. So everybody picked their favorite vegetables and decided what to plant. Even Brussels sprouts made it in after some debate. <laughs> and this is Chris. Um, Highland Park does have a resident garden expert, and Chris is it, and he led a discussion of, okay, this is all you want to plant now. How much space do they take, and how much sunlight do they need? We have logistics to look at. And that's the design for 
the scheme for the garden. And what I loved is before they ever planted anything, they realized that plot was too small and they snagged a piece of parking lot because they couldn't live without uh, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, and some other indigenous flowers. One of the things that the group did was to map their assets, right? What are, the, what are the talents? What's the time? What are all the resources they had to get this done? And, and for what we don't have, where do we go and get that? And they took over making a whole schedule and a plan for how it was going to go. When did the soil have to be prepared? When did the seedlings have to go in, etc. That was a more serious part of the day. And one of the things we felt strongly about is if you want to change the way the world sees you, if you want to change the way you see yourself, there's nothing like a new identity to get that started and to, to change the way people perceive you. So each of the students had done some logo designs. That's Anthony presenting his winning logo. And it was very kind of wonderful client presentation, but th they landed on the logo they liked in about five minutes. Nobody disagreed. They all agreed to the colors they liked. And this is the new logo for the Highland Park Community Garden. <laughs> Which so our hope is that you will see that on some shopping bags and some tags on vegetables and maybe even someday some trucks driving around the city. And last, everybody in the community, um, the. Actually, we, we decided they are the executive to team, the, the group that was there. They made commitments for what they're going to do. So everybody for themselves, for their, um, for their colleagues and teammates, um, they, they made a promise for what part of it they're going to carry forward. So now the plot thickens. It's a plan, a narrative, and a place, and now we'd like to expand it to more of Richmond. So we have a surprise presenter, happily not a surprise to him, only to you. Um, this is Tony Scott, who completely coincidentally went to SVA, studied photography, took most of the wonderful photographs you just saw, and he's going to invite you to a garden party. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to say and echo what Andy said about Cheryl. I mean, it was truly amazing. Uh, how quickly people got involved in this thing. Uh, we had one gentleman in the group who said, I don't know anything about gardening. I don't even know what a carrot vine looked like. <laughs> That's a joke. Carrots don't grow in vines. Okay. Uh, but he, he got involved in it. Uh, he came to work, and he was kind of disappointed we didn't dig and all that stuff that day. <laughs> but he'll be back, and so we're going to show him a carrot vine. <laughs> um, really appreciate the work that Cheryl has done. Boaz and Ruth is an organization that's been in existence for 10 years now. We're going into our 11th year. It was geared up primarily to deal with people who have a history of incarceration. Some folk like to call them ex-offenders. We don't. Um, and to give them a second chance. Our mission, threefold, or actually our strategy is threefold, but our mission is to help develop Highland Park that it becomes a thriving, healthy, beautiful community. Uh, our mission is to help to rebuild lives through transitional jobs, training, connecting with the community across Richmond. So, April the 27th is our groundbreaking, ground digging, manure spreading <laughs> day. So I'd like to invite you to come out. If you can't come out on the 7th, on April the 27th, come out on May the 8th, because we're doing the same thing once again. Uh, so I'd like to invite you. So folk who have here, here's my pitch now. Folk who have tools, uh, manure, topsoil, <laughs> any of the stuff that Seedlings. will make a garden grow. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Stay here with me. So, 
show up and get your hands dirty. Um, we've been told by the TEDx folks that they will um, communicate details with you, for you, to you. And um, whatever we did, whatever we sparked, we're only at the starting line. And so we're asking all of Rich Richmond to co-create with us. This is Peanut. Um, he was bored most of the time, as you can see. Um, but we hope that by the time he's old enough to work in the garden that he finds the nourishment and the fulfillment and the health and the happiness that he needs and the whole community needs. So, thank you. And looking at this, one of the things that we discovered in looking at community garden is that there is no community garden in Highland Park. So this will be the first. Thank you. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. So the early on vision of TEDxRVA was a combination of the crash of that local, that local brilliance, and that international and kind of global brilliance. And so this is a great embodiment. That Cheryl, what's the one thing we need to keep in mind to keep this kind of idea alive? What's one thing we need to learn from you again? You need to show up. Done. You just need to show up. And shovel some manure. Done. Shovel some shit. Yes. Shovel some shit. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you.